hey, we should all offer personal development opportunities to our people. And I'm gonna have Reggie Brock on in a second here to talk about this. We're actually having an event at the office on Friday in Minneapolis that you could send your people to, your leaders or folks you wanna give a little kick in the butt to. Uh, there's group discounts and stuff like that. But anyways, first we're gonna talk about why you should offer personal development opportunities to your people. And then we're gonna talk about a couple key ways to do this besides just having them to this event. So uh, he's gonna hop on here in a second. I'm very much excited about that. I'm gonna share it with him just in case, just to make sure he got it. Um, here we go. So from my point of view as a young business leader, it's very easy to you know, pay for consultants or pay for coaches or things like that for me as a leader. And it's a little harder, like, it's better, I, I think, sometimes to push on, hey, what can I bring, uh, have my people to do? And I'll just share this with Reggie. Like, there's a, well, how's it going, man? Good to see you. Hey, buddy. There is a, it's a, there's a weird, weird thing where, for some reason, it's easier to buy coaches and consultants and stuff like that for yourself as a leader. I think partly it's like they're all targeting the leader. You know what I mean? As far as their person, because that's the person who makes the decision. But I get content bloat as the yeah. leader. Like as, as, the, as the company owner, I get bloated with information and bloated with, with like development. So like I have to figure out how can I, I need to get my people up to that. You know what I mean? I have, I've consumed too much information and it's very hard to give it to my people, but I need to, I need to figure out ways to get all that information to the 27 people on my team, you know? So that's, that's why I'm so excited. So Reggie's actually speaking at our office to our people tomorrow. And then on Friday, he's going to be doing this leadership training, but Reggie, why? Why offer these personal development opportunities to your people? What's the point? So I think you make a great point. <laughs> that is, we all seek others to tell us what to do with our lives. We are- Hey Reggie, I can't tell if it's just me or if, are you quiet? No, I don't say. Can you hear me now? I feel like I'm, I'm not hearing you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lean in a little bit. Go for it. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm hoping it's just my speaker. So go ahead. Uh, let, me, let me just see something. Hold on a minute. Let me try this. Can you hear me any different now? Um, I can't, but okay. I, think, I think you should right, just, so just go for it, man. I think okay. talk to us. Right. So I think we're a society that is addicted to advice. We don't, and the reason for that is many times we just don't want to make a decision ourselves, or we don't want to put the work in required for us to look, get the answers that we're looking for and so what what's a normal thing to do well we're we, we believe they find a book to read in the book will give us all the answers and listen all the tools we have available for us are good and i'm excited about it, and i'm thankful for all the coaches and all that but the fact of the matter is you will never grow personally until you decide to take action all the reading all the advice you're getting all of those things are wonderful but at the end of the day they are not a substitute for internalizing what's required in your life to be better than what you're doing. I don't care if it's better in relationships. I don't care if it's better in, you know, work or whatever it is. You've got to put work in. And what we think is that if we get enough advice, it will preclude us from having to do the work required to grow. Listen, Tim, to get from where you are to where you need to be, you're going to have to do things you've never done. And it doesn't, it's not, the answers are not always found by somebody coming to you and just giving you, plopping all this information at going like, hey, good luck. You have got to, we have got to learn to internalize and then take action. And I think we have got to move away from just our lives being geared around and only only satisfied when somebody tells us what to do with our, our own lives and, you know, keeps us from doing the work required to really grow and progress. Reg and that's what Reggie, I want. So folks are, you know, you don't just do business coaching, I know. Um, You've been you've been kind of 
you've been going into companies and sharing with their whole team, right? Like you've been you've been talking to their whole team. Yeah. Why do folks why do folks go that route instead of just having you talk to the the owner? Like why don't why do they bring you in to talk to their whole team instead of just like getting coaching from you personally? So I think that I think I think owners are starting to be more concerned about life outside of work for their people. Yeah. And so most of the things that we talk about is about balance creation. It is really about habits and it's really about how do we get better with wherever in life we are, it's work or wherever. And so yeah. I think that there's a rise inside of companies for people to go like, hey, this is not just about me anymore as a company. I've got people who contribute to this. Any way we can help them grow and develop, I want to be able to do it. And so I think that's the that's one of the niches I feel and being able to come in and kind of explore throughout an organization what challenges are there and helping people at their own pace and in their own way find the solutions they need to grow. Yeah, I'll just I'll throw it out here. So I feel as though frankly reggie sometimes i feel like i have gotten major advantages from all the, from the information that i've gotten but also the action i've taken yeah. from that i i feel like i have a lot of major advantages as an individual like i'm i'm very productive and, and effective in a lot of ways that i want my team to be i wish that they could be but most people don't have the luxury to sit around consuming this like life-changing information right like it's it's hard to spend the time to do that when you're kind of just in a rat race so kind of there's a there's a limit there's a very low limit for where the average worker can be like there's a very there's you see these super high performers I, i'm like thinking of like at sales companies where there's a guy selling 18 million a guy selling 4 million or something like that crazy stupid numbers right but most people can't even like fucking fathom that, Reggie. Yeah. Like they can't even they can't even fathom these ridiculous moments because they don't think exponentially. And you know, like well, you're missing something there. I think what yeah. you're missing: some people are not built for 18 million. They're not interested in 18 million. Yeah. Four million where they want. And the the problem is sometimes, Tim, as leaders, we want for people more than they want for themselves. And with yeah. that, you deadlock. And so yeah. it tell owners constantly all the time, one of the ways that you have to subjugate, so to speak, this, you know, the despair between two is you've got to really start figuring out what other people won't help them to get there. Because if all you see is, hey, Dan did 18 million, why can't you do 18 million? There's going to be a constant disconnect. And the fact of the matter is what you're interested in, I may not be. And what your goals are, I might not have complied with them. And so finding goal alignment and really realizing what people want to do is really critical as opposed to what you need them to do. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like this is easier, Reggie. And I'm just, you know, I'm preparing you for our team tomorrow yeah. a little bit because I'm so excited for you to talk to our team. Like I, we love bringing in speakers and people that can speak into our our team's lives in ways that I can't and sometimes they can't hear me man yep. they can't because they've heard me because I have to get on them about little stuff or whatever you yeah. know um but one of the things is like it's hard with once you go past a certain size of the team like once I you know now that I have 27 it's a 27 person team yeah. it's hard to stay on that like I, I used to, when it was seven people or ten people I would be like, I know everybody's goal in life, you know what I mean, all the time, and it's hard to know. And I mean, I guess I need to teach my managers more about that, you know. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And and so yeah. I mean, if you are the only slice and dice, so to speak, if you're the yeah. only nourishment that people yeah. get, if you are, the, then I think you've got an imbalanced organization. Yeah. If you have leaders and they're not equipped to mentor and develop other people, that should be your first line of attack. Yeah. Not trying to find everybody's answers for everybody's life 27 people what if it becomes 200 people are you gonna do the same thing yeah you can't i mean there's no way this can happen so a powerful development of culture inside of an organization is and this is one of the things i love doing is mentoring leaders how are you not just you tim becoming better but how is your team becoming better especially those in leadership role because cascading effect is what you're looking yeah. for you know i to build them, I want to grow them, but 
they've got to turn around and do the same thing for their people or you become lopsided and you can't maintain equilibrium as a culture. So let me try to restate what I think you're sent, telling me to do, which I appreciate, which is I need to focus on nourishing my lead, my like, let's say five direct reports, most, yeah. of, most of all, so that they can get better at nourishing their yeah. people, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, and, and one way that you can nourish, I mean, I'm, I'm, we, we are doing this a little bit for this event on Friday here in Minneapolis. Yeah. Uh, one way to nourish your direct reports, let's say you've got three leaders that you really want to make sure that they're growing is to bring them to this event. It's going to be Reggie Brock talking about leadership and uh, personal development. It's, it's uh, Kurt Linnington. Yeah. Also of Linear Roofing, which is a very, very successful roofing company that's, that's yeah. just on blast off right now. Yeah. And then we've got Mike Goldenstein, who's going to be doing his his bid as the shingle wizard. But he's but you guys are also talking about uh, managed repair programs yeah. as well. And for yeah. for like, so why does that because that'll be a cool panel. Um, why does that matter? or should it matter to roofing companies right now, just so they can get a little preview of this content that's going on on Friday. So if, you know, one of the questions I'm asked, some of it's just because of my history is, is this for reals at staying, right? Yeah. Is this like some insurance fan? It is not. And so I think these guys will see no, number one in this panel that we have, we're not making a decision for anybody. This is just information gathering. I get calls almost weekly, people going like, hey man, should I get in this one? Should I get in this one? It's MRPs come around, I hear these people. And so what we're trying to do is just to encourage and equip people to make decisions for themselves. Because listen, for me to say managed repair pro, uh, are good or bad, I'm not gonna do that. There's a bunch of people doing that. What I'm gonna do, is bring the information or what we're going to do on this panel is bring the information so that when you hear it, you'll know it and then be able to apply it and see if it's a fit or not. Now I will say this, managed repair ain't going anywhere. You yeah. know, the fact of the matter is it's going to grow as more contractors get involved and there's going to be a ton of, uh, of uh, marketing and a lot of effort made from carriers and MRPs to start building these networks out. So, it's better in my opinion, at least if people know and make a good disqualified decision on it. I don't have a dog in the fight. I don't, and I'm not gonna get a dog in the fight. It's very informational to me, and I wanna share it with people so they can make better decisions about whether or not MRP, DRPs for their business or not. Awesome, I appreciate that. I'm super excited about it. And like I said, I mean, just so everyone knows, I mean, like we're bringing in Reggie in to speak with our team because we believe that he's got value. So if you know, besides the event on Friday, if you ever feel the the, the need for yourself to, to offer more opportunities yeah. for your people to grow, Reggie coming in and talking to your team or, or attending one of the events that Reggie is at might be a, a good moment for them to experience. And before we go, Tim, I'll say this. You know, this, I, I, and I say this kind of confidently, but with a little bit of concern. There's nothing at this event that they're going to hear that they standard here at any of the other stuff they go to. There's nothing wrong with the other things, but this is more just about how do you get your underperformers and underachievers really synced up and moving in the right direction. And good leaders can do that. So if you're in that place, join us tomorrow or Friday at nine o'clock at the Hook Agency and still got a couple tickets left or we got some tickets left, you know, get them online and uh or on this post or i don't know what you're gonna do but just you get tickets so right now it's like 30 people or something like that yeah, yeah. a little bit over a few over 30. you don't want to do the whole like we've only got three tickets left and buy them immediately or you're out thing i, I don't want because the, the fact of the matter is this event by nature for me it was yeah. I, I like it small because there's going to be a lot of vulnerable kind of conversations and this ain't about big this is about how do we get better and so it's gonna be a little bit more intimate we're looking forward to it and good lunch provided and and uh, i think they'll have some stuff to take away they're going to be able to use immediately absolutely and reggie obviously i'm super excited to have you see you tomorrow see you tomorrow all right buddy thank you so much Come to minnesota get ready twin cities <laughs> all right thanks buddy.